I'd like to introduce Greg Lemon. Greg um, was the founder of an early SC2 grantee, Downtown College Prep, which many of you know well, um, and was a teacher for many years before that. And he has moved um, not on from DCP, but moved on to collaborate with DCP as the founder of the, uh, the ACE Charter School in San Jose. And um, what SC2 funded was a consortium of all of these schools. So thinking about scale in a little bit of a different way, that not just funding one set of schools to, to grow, but rather funding a whole consortium of schools to really think about how can we change the situation for students in San Jose. So with that, I'd like to introduce Greg. Good evening, everybody. Um, it is a little daunting to think about uh, how long ago it was when I uh, came and visited the uh, SB2 Star Chamber uh, Grant Committee down in downtown uh, San Jose. Raise your hand if you were one of those Star Chamber. There you are. Yeah. Yeah, scary people. Um, <laughs> that was at the point in my career where, as I was saying to someone earlier, I was really eager to meet some adults. I had been working with a lot of 17 year olds. and. Uh, Got my uh, business cards printed at Kinko's, and you know we were good to go. Um, we did not uh, get the grant, but uh, uh, we got some um, sympathetic support from the people who uh, felt bad for us because I think we were unable to hide the fact that we're like, oh, we didn't. Um, so it's it's been quite a run for the last ten years. Um, I'd like to just talk a little bit about why the consortium matters. Um, it's been said about schools that they are a group of very energetic people bound together by a common parking lot, and, uh, and that is really a big part of the problem. Um, there is very little that goes on at schools, uh, whether they be charters or whether they be conventional public schools, that is really responsive to the best thinking and the latest advances in whether it be educational technology, standards-based education, figuring out how to work with parents, um, there just isn't that common thread. Um, and even amongst charter schools, and we're kind of a little a weird circle of odd people off in the corner, you'd think that we'd be a little bit more closely aligned. And, and I kind of thought we were. Um, but in San Jose, a group of the, the more uh, growth-oriented charters got together and started having kind of ad hoc meetings. And we started talking about collaboration and using other big T-I-O-N nouns and thinking about what we're going to do. And um, we realized that we would come together and have really, really good conversations, and nothing would happen. Um, and a lot of stuff, frankly, in San Jose needs to happen. Um, and so you know, knowing what I know about SB2 and knowing the way that they actually um, you know, think pretty seriously about some of those big nouns, including leverage, it was not a surprise to me that they were willing to go out on a limb and say, okay, here are these nonprofit types who are putting schools together, who are having these sort of glorified coffee clashes. Let's see if we can actually get something to happen as a result. And so SB2 um, basically allowed us to hire a director, uh, a person to make sure that when we said we were going to do X by Y, that X happens by Y. And uh, it's been really a little short of phenomenal what's going on in the city of San Jose. So for instance, um, right now the mayor and the county uh, superintendent have gotten together to uh, make a pledge. You know, one of those typical kind of pledges, San Jose 2020, students to proficiency by 2020. Um, but the fact that it's the San Jose mayor and it's the county superintendent is, is really significant. And again, that's one of those things that got born in a consortium discussion and would have died in a consortium discussion unless our director was like, no, I'm going to go meet with the mayor. I'm going to go meet with the county superintendent. We're going to get this ball rolling. We're going to have a charter summit where hundreds of people from around the state come. We're going to bring people together and, and get things moving. And so it's allowed that impact that I think our schools have individually to start to trickle out into the larger city. On the flip side, internally, as we started joining each other's boards, we started to realize, oh my God, you actually, when you say you're going to do that, you do that. And so just personally for me, um, uh, the CEO of Rocket Chip Education joined Ace's board. And he, the guy is an ex-tech um, entrepreneur, and the way he thinks about organizational development, and the way he thinks about how you greenlight a subsequent school, just 
she literally just lifted the top of my head off. I'm like, wow, this is, again, I, I, you know, bringing this whole new way of thinking. And now it's not just, oh, we're at Starbucks talking about it, but he's actually convincing my board to say, don't listen to Greg. He really doesn't know what he's talking about. You're not going to open school number two until you do X, Y, and Z. Here's our rewriting <laughs> process. Here's the metrics we have to hit. And so just Greg needs to be quiet while we figure out how we're going to do this. And I was like, oh, OK, this is real, and this is happening. And, and honestly, I mean, uh, those kind of things are the things that allow a charter school like A's, which is 200 UB 57th graders in Alamo, to become this, the charter management organization we want to become with five schools within five square miles, serving all the far below and below basic kids in the San Jose. So these are kind of quantum leaps that happen when you put someone in the mix at the right time and give them the power to make the trains run on time and make them go where they're supposed to go. And so it's not this, hey, I'll see you at the charter conference and we'll talk. But we have some goals, we have some deadlines, and, and frankly, it's, it's, it's given the charter movement in San Jose a little bit of a, a kick where, where perhaps a kick was, was all too necessary. We're like, no, 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 you guys have to stop just talking about goals, but actually have consequences when you don't meet them. You have to stop making big promises and not figuring out how you're going to deliver on them. So, uh, I'm incredibly grateful to to SD2, not only for letting me, you know, come and present back on in what was it, 2000, geez, what was it? In 2000, okay, so back then, you know, my first pitch, and uh, hopefully it's gotten a little more polished since then. So, it was John, I know, I know. Well, he's mocked me about that several times. So, um, but I think, you know, just to give you an example of how this all happened. So you may have read about the city of San Jose having some tough times, and um, they're closing community centers. And that's devastating for some of these communities. And so Alicia, our consortium director, gets a call from the head of Parks and Rec and says, you know, we've got some community centers, and we're wondering if the consortium will be interested in working with us to keep those community centers open as community schools. And that's just game changer for the community. That doesn't happen with ACE, that doesn't happen with DCT or FIP or Rock, it just that happens when there's a consortium and the city feels like there's a partner and someone with leverage and someone who can really speak for a citywide movement. And so, uh, you know, although obviously those San Jose 2020 100% of proficiency goals are always a little bit just, you know, nominal goals. I, I don't know that we'll get to 100%, but I know that because of your investment, we're going to get a heck of a lot 